Hello everybody, this is the garden tour for June 1st, the month of mainly Geminis. June will have the only first start day of the year. So if June starts on a Monday, June 1st, no other month of the year will start on a Monday. Birth flower, let's see, the rose and I believe the honeysuckle. And of course, the stone is pearl. How do I know that? because that's the month I was born in, next week. But anyways, that's not what we're here for. We're here for a garden tour. It's summer, it's early in the morning. I say summer loosely. Uh, it's almost summer, but we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. Look, I have got zucchini. This is the video I did of the net that I did, the tool, it's worked perfect. The squirrels come up, they look at it, they leave, and let me show you what I've got. I'm going to remove the clothespins. Remember when you clothespin things, you can also use clothespins as just weights. Let's see. So let's get in here and look and see what I've got. Look at that gorgeous flower. Let's see. I think there is. Look at that. I see zucchini bread, which is really cake, in my future. Probably this weekend. So we will see. So this has worked great. I'll come back and clip it back on afterwards. I'll put the link, I always say that and then I forget. I'll put the link to this video if you wanna do this. This is the tool. I use the buckets to hold the stakes because of course this is blacktop. We've talked about this before. And so I can't stick the stakes in the ground because it's blacktop. But oh, those, those flower pots have worked wonders. I can now stake anywhere I wanna stake. I'm gonna do this one and I'm gonna make a little circle and do the same thing here. I've been collecting soil, native soil, which is clay and that's heavy. So it works really good. And I'll use, of course, the planters that I put on each corner. I will use that to plant mint and different things in. So the front yard's coming real good. I've got ideas of what I'm gonna do here. I think I'm gonna make some uh, a plant food feeder. I'll explain that when I get that together right there and it will feed my plants, but we'll do it later. It's not done. I've got some green sorrow here. I've started some squash in here. This is squash that grew in my garden, the seeds, so it could be part zucchini and part who knows. It could be spaghetti squash. It's what happens with hybrids, but you know what? The hybrids grow the best, so I'm going to let them do their thing. And then, of course, my pansies, my flowers, my tomatoes are doing real good. I've got a little cucumber plant. Now, this one, I kind of haphazardly threw the netting around. So there is some cucumbers down there starting, but this tomato plant from last year is just going wild. We've got tomatoes everywhere on this. And then these came up as volunteers. So we'll see what they throw. And I see a flower down there. Hmm. We'll have to see. Oh, that looks like another cucumber plant. Cool. And then garlic chives. So that's what's going on in the front yard. This is a work in progress. I am still working on it. And well, gardening is a work in progress all the time. But I'm now trying to figure out how I'm gonna do things. And now that the tool worked perfectly, I'm gonna probably spread them a little further and stake the tool around anywhere the squirrels are bothering it. The ones that are really doing the damage are the ground squirrels. So they're the ones that get in there and they do damage, so that, that really helps. And then of course you've seen the fence I put up here oh, many, many months ago now. And this is done wonderful. And so now I've got all kinds of walking onions. I've got cuttings from dinosaur kale. I've got orange mint growing down there, green, vein so green sorrel. My red vein is back there. And then I've got more walking onions. This I did a video on on how I inserted a cup in there, a, a planter. So now that will get water because bricks do suck the water. Gary was telling me about a friend. They put up a brick wall, and before they put the wall together, they had to soak the bricks in water. Otherwise, the mortar in the heat would just crack because the bricks would suck the, the dampness out of the mortar when they were putting the wall together, and then they would just not seal really good. So they soaked the bricks, and that's why, because bricks will soak the water away or pull the water away from the plants. This is peppermint. Is that beautiful? We've been making tea. And then I put a pot, you know how I layer. So I've got a pot in there with a tomato plant. And we'll see if it's gonna go up. And then of course, of course, of course I've got squash growing in here. I've got actual squash growing in there. I don't know if you can see it in there. That's what I thought. 
That squash is round. See, I thought I put zucchini in here, but I knew it wasn't zucchini because it's leaving. When you see it trailing up, you know it's not zucchini. Zucchini should not leave. So it's leaving. So we'll see, it's squash, squash is squash. You know, even spaghetti squash, I was using it when it was small. We had so much of it. I cut it long before it was ripe and I could cook with it and do everything I normally do with uh, anything, any other squash, zucchini or anything. Just use it when it's young. So I'll see what this is because I really thought I planted zucchini. All right, the ginger and turmeric table. And of course the stevia. The stevia, this has been going now for years, a couple years now. It just comes up from the roots, it reseeds itself, but I think mainly coming up from the roots. It is doing beautiful. It loves it here and this is why I leave it here because it likes the wall of the house, either the heat, the protection. Plus it only gets morning sun, it doesn't get evening sun. I don't think it likes the heat. Sometimes it will say it likes full sun, the first time I got stevia and put it in full sun, I lost it. It doesn't like the full sun. And it may depend on where you're located and how warm you are. So we were too warm. It didn't like it. It died. This is good. This was one plant and there were multiple plants in the pot when I bought it. And I can't remember, I bought it at Home Depot or Lowell's. And I separated them because I've got the original pot still in there. I never took it out of the pot. You know how I am, I don't. There's the pot, that's the original pot. But I separated it because there was a whole bunch of teeny ones and it just grows all through here. That's a tea plant. My friend bought it and he lost two of them. He had three of them. So he gave me this one. It was almost dead. Look at that. All right. Let's see. Why do I want to talk about ginger and turmeric? The store bought one. I want, I, you know, I did a video and I haven't put it up yet or I was working on a video. I took it out and I should get a short video up for people that aren't seeing this and I soaked it. So if you're buying ginger from the store or turmeric, soak it overnight because they put growth inhibitors on most of them now. And if you plant them, they may not grow. I'm not saying they won't grow, but they may not grow. They may rot in your soil before they grow. So soak it. So I soaked it and we'll see if it grows. Sometimes they don't grow at all. I experimented. I put paper towel down and with not paper towel, newspaper here, and nothing came up, just to see if, what would speed it up. And then I put a container here, nothing came up. And look at these, nothing, and here it is. So it doesn't matter, when they're ready, they're ready. And this one, let's look over here, nothing yet. And this one is up because this one was in the house and this one had the pot here. And the pot was helping, I guess, keep this plant warm. So it grew really good, so this one stayed Okay, see the little holes? That's roly-polies. It could be slugs, but I know I've seen roly-polies, but it could be either one of them. They got in there. It's not gonna hurt the plant. It'll come back. Don't worry about stuff like that. Um, but anyways, that one was in, left in the house, and so it never completely died away. So that's the story on the ginger and turmeric, but we'll do more of that another time. So like I said, I experimented, and it didn't matter whether they were covered with newspaper, covered with a, a plastic carton, it didn't matter, and when they're ready to come up, they're going to come up, each one, individual, when they're ready. And does that one get more sun? No, because they all get more sun here. They all get the same. Okay, let's go into the main yard now. Walking onions are walking everywhere. The babies are popping out. Look at that. They're just popping out and popping out. And this one's got multiple babies. See how they can send out multiple babies? I hope I'm... You're seeing this on the camera. There you go. See, this one sent out. Oh, this one broke off. Ooh, I better do something with this. I didn't know this one broke off. Okay. This one had babies here. And then it's sending out more babies. Now, the reason this... I'm going to put it in the flower pot. And you can do that. Just If it breaks off, just stick it in water. That one's feeding off the stem. So this one is feeding off of this one. And that's what they do sometimes, but something broke. I could have broke it when I was working here. I don't know, but that's the walking onions and they are walking everywhere. Oh, this tomato plant is really struggling with our cold weather. So I don't know, this is a Bradley's Atomic and it may not be happy here. So we'll see what happens as the weather warms, if it will make it. And if it doesn't, I'll stick with the tomatoes that do well here. These are hybrid squash, I believe. There might be a zucchini plant in here as well. They're just starting. And then I've got mint and all these tomatoes are volunteers. 
So I'm going to have to separate them because there's way too many. See how they came up in here? Just way too many. And look at this. I've got cucumbers. Look at the cucumbers. Look at that. I've got cucumbers. Is that cool? Can you see it? I hope you can. It's full of cucumbers. I put tool around just in case the squirrels get in here. I'm not sure. Again, clothespins just as weights. Remember, you can use them as weights. I ran out. I've got to go get some more. Nothing new really through here. It's still my old dinosaur kale and it's so split that I am slowly chopping it away. I don't want to take the whole tree out and it is a tree um, because it is sending growth from the bottom. So if I end up chopping it down, it might just come back. And then there's a tree collared cutting I did. Isn't that beautiful? And that's just sitting there. And that I'm going to leave there. If it wants to get really big there, that's perfectly fine. And don't forget, you never throw leaves away. Leaves are plant food. That's gold. I love cleaning the garden. I go around with a container and I collect all the leaves. Because that you just put in a pot, put some water in there. The water kind of ferments and then you can use that to water your plants. You can dilute it down and water your plants with it a little bit. There's no ratio. Do it whatever way you want. And the plants, oh my gosh, the next day they just take off. And then the leaves that were in there rotten, throw it in your compost containers. So that's what I do. Tomatoes coming up, onions of course, more walking onions, dinosaur kale, lemon verbena through here. And let's see, and then curly kale. And the bees are out already. It's early and it's cool still, but they're out working. They're doing their thing. And look, they love lemon verbena flowers. See, people have asked me, you don't have enough flowers. My vegetable plants, I let a lot of them go to flower. I mean, look at that. He just went up to the top to get some from dinosaur kale. That's dinosaur kale flower. And look, there's a bee there right now. I do leave a lot of my things to go to seed, a lot of my plants, and I let them flower. And this way, the bees have the flowers to pollinate and collect what they need and do their thing. And then, of course, the hummingbirds feed off of it too, so I do have a lot of flowers. You may not think I do, but I do. I really look at this. This is all flowers. Let's see, what's here new? Nothing really, all the same old. The same old celery from last year. That's the purple kale back there that I rooted and it's taken off. And then my mushroom plant is just starting to come back. They don't like the cold and they die back. And as you can see, it's full of new growth. There's another one underneath there. And then this lemon verbena also. See, I have flowers. I'm going to be careful. I don't want to get stung in case there's bees. I have flowers everywhere. There's flowers up there. See? Even though I don't collect the seed from the dinosaur kale, I still let it go to flower. All this is, this is dinosaur kale. The hummingbirds feed on this all day. And so do butterflies, bees, and, and everything. Then, of course, my tomato that made it through the winter really good. And I've got to remember to get cuttings off of this plant and keep this going because this has been the best tomato. We have had tomatoes all fall, all winter, and it's still going strong. Needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but that's all. Oh, look at my purple sprouting broccoli. I've been eating it. I've been using it in salads, just snapping it off and eating it. Can you believe it took a year? It took a year till it started, and now I keep getting so much, I can't believe it. And then, of course, up there, I forgot to take it off. Which, you know what, is okay. I might actually collect the seeds. They probably won't be true to anything because they're probably going to be cross-pollinated with the collard and the regular sprouting broccoli. Who knows what I'll grow. The bees love it. Look at that. The bees just love it. They're all over it. That's purple. Both of these are purple sprouting broccoli. But I do have flowers in my garden. I have vegetable flowers in my garden. And, of course, I've got some geranium. That just, I stuck a piece in there years ago and doesn't stop growing. See, more has, look at this. That's why I said it keeps coming up. Every time I turn around, I find purple sprouting broccoli. And it's really good. It has a sweeter flavor. Of course, you know I've got the mint on the bottom. That's chocolate mint. That's the strawberry mint. What is nice about the strawberry mint is when you brush up against it, it smells so good. It really, really smells really good. All this wild stuff that looks terrible, that's all the sprouting broccoli. The birds have done a number to it. See, they're eating the seed pods. Those are the seed pods and they're eating the seeds. It's already flowered, it's almost done. 
there is very little flower. See, this is the flowers from the sprouting broccoli, the plain one. So, you know, they've done their thing. This is done flowering. So the only thing that would cross-pollinate with really would be the collard plant. So maybe I'll collect some seeds, maybe a few. But look at that, just full of bees. They're having a blast. Let's see, that is orange mint on the bottom there, right there. Keep those in containers, even though some of them have taken off some of my mint, which is okay. I like, we use a lot of mint, so I like mint. And let's see, there's the fountains. People should really put a fountain. And it doesn't have to be this big. This one's electric. We have two electrics and the rest are all solar. Now, today being early and the sun is kind of like trying to come through the clouds, they're not all going to work, but that's okay. This one's, no, that one's not trying right now. But they'll work as they go on. And there is my dazzling blue kale also in flower. Now, I don't have a lot of greens to pick and eat off of it, even though I can use the small leaves, and we do. But once they're done flowering and they're done seeding, I could cut it, I could leave it. The, the leaves will start to triple and quadruple in size because they're putting all their energy right now into reproducing. The plant's not going to die. Collard, kales, they don't die. They're not lettuce. They're just doing their thing. Listen to that mockingbird. He's trying to outdo me. What they're doing is putting all their energy into just reproducing. So they're putting very little into their leaves right now. And it makes common sense. And they can't do everything. So once they're done, then the leaves will get bigger and we'll have better food to eat. But I have so much, so it's not like I'm missing anything. That one too is electric. And I bought that one on my birthday. Jeez, I think for, I think it's four years. You know, the way time goes, it's either three or four years. I'm not sure. I walked into a thrift store on my birthday. He got it in and he sold it to me. I can't remember. It was under $20. I think it was like $15. And that's been one of my favorites. But even the ones you make, I mean, this is solar. And look, it's trickling. And they love it. They go in here and take baths and everything. Okay, now let's get back to the garden. What is all over the ground? Oh, boy. This is spearmint, and it has taken off with all the rain and the water it's been getting. I am going to have to trim it down. I'm not trim it out, but trim it down. Because when our weather does really warm up truly, and we start getting into the 75, 85 degrees, we get snakes in our garden. Now, the snakes we normally get are gopher snakes, and I don't mind them at all. I actually like them. We do have king snakes out here. We do have some racers out here. I uh, do, but there's some rosy boas they sent out here too. I have not seen those. Look at the hummingbird. I'll, I'll focus on him while I'm talking. But the reason I need to get that trimmed is the rattlesnakes. And I don't want to be reaching my hand into something and end up in emergency being bit by a rattlesnake. As a friend told me, stay calm, just walk in the house and call 911. And you always call 911 if you're ever bit by a rattlesnake. Why do you always call 911? You don't go to the hospital. Because they have to find out who's got the antivenom. You could go to the hospital and they may not have it. And then they're looking for it. So that's not going to help you or help anybody. So you always call 911 if you're bit by a rattlesnake. And let them know you are bit by a rattlesnake. They'll take you to whomever has it. Plus, the other thing is, I heard that the antivenom could be frozen. And they will need a thought. And it could take 45 minutes to an hour. So this way, they're ready for you when you get there. So it's good to know. We know these things in case of emergency. Look at the pepinos. I've got that covered so nothing can get to it. Put some tool around it. There's more back there. Look at that. Can you see that? Let's see if you can see that. I've got pepinos on here. I actually should pick them. We've been eating them at all stages. If I eat them when they're still hard like that and they're not, let's say, ripe or sweet, I chop them up and I fry them up with onions. So if I'm making something with onions, He's actually going to get louder. I fry them up and I use them as a vegetable. If you wait, they get sweeter and then you can use it as anything. We're going to have to look at him. So, because he wants attention. So let's go take a look at him.
Okay, well enough with him. He's very distracting and very loud. This is that field of color that came up a long time ago. And again, look at all the flowers and look at the bees. I don't know if you can see it, but there are bees working this plant completely. They love these flowers. So though I may not buy a lot of flowers, and of course, if you're looking at flowers going, wait, she's got flowers here. Again, that's the geranium plant. It was supposed to be a little plant and I do want to trim it back a little bit. I don't know how much they actually get off of geraniums, but I do see bees working them. I do see even hummingbirds on them. And even the tomato moss, the hummingbird moss, they come out at night and they work it. So they must get something off of it, but I know they're not the best for pollen and nectar. But collard, they love all the different collards. The collards, the kales. Look how blue that is. It's gotten cold, you know, kind of cold. So my beautiful dazzling blue kale has turned so purple they call it blue but it's just so bluish purple it's so beautiful but anyways this is the field it's kind of there was a plant down there and it just took off and i let it do its thing i'll trim all this the dead parts off later when the seed heads all die and whatever is left the birds will come in and eat the seeds and i may collect a little i may not because i do a lot of cuttings off a of collar if i like the plant i prefer cuttings and the cuttings are to me better because I know exactly what I'm getting because I'm getting a clone of the plant. Let's see what's going on here. More walking onions. This is a peppermint stick. They call it celery. See, it's kind of reddish. So I've got that there. And again, I layer. So if I water this pot, I don't have to water that one. And that's going to always, this pot will always keep it damp underneath for that pot. So it works out really good. I layer so much. I'm doing more layering now than I've ever done before. I think Gary's even layering. But let's see, let's get back to the spearmint. So I'm gonna trim this all down, not out. Nothing's going out, just down. See, this is solar, see how beautiful? This is solar and it's just slowly bubbles and the birds come in and take a bath. My panels are there. I've got a really cool way of making solar panel holders and I haven't even put any in my yard yet because I want to share that with you. So I've got to get that together because it's worked out really good. These are okay, but they fall off. The other one, they can't fall off. All right, let's, I digress and then I forget what I'm talking about. This is parsley and it's gone way to seed. So I'm going to probably very shortly kind of take a lot of that out. I have grabbed some of the brown seed and sprinkled it around. This is why I go, oh, why is there parsley growing in my celery and onions? I didn't plant that. Well, maybe if I watch this video, I'll remember. But I do want to grab some and save it. And then the rest, some of it, I let the birds eat. Why do I let so many birds in my garden? First of all, I have more than enough food to worry about. So we have plenty for ourselves. The other reason is, the seed eaters that come in are also bringing in the insect eaters because if they're here, the insect eaters come in like the mockingbird and say, oh, this is a safe place to be. Everybody's here. And those are the ones you want. Because let me tell you something. When I first started gardening here, quite a few years, I, might, I, mean, I can't say quite a few years ago, four or five years ago, I was going nuts with, with caterpillars. Look at this. The celery's trying to come to reach the sun so it can do its thing. That's a big old turnip. And that went to seed. And then there's my lemon balm I bought, still in the pot, but it has spread and gone everywhere. And then collard and walking kale, walking, walking onions. And then I've got tomato plant, sweet potato, and let's swing back. But going back to the caterpillars, I had caterpillars like mad. I thought I was gonna lose my mind. And we would be out here collect at night collecting hornworms and all that. You know, now that we brought in the birds, we don't do that, we don't bother. What's happened here is everything is pretty well balanced. So I've got nature doing its own thing. So are there tomato hornworms? Yeah, once in a while there are. But normally the mockingbirds, the orioles, whatever else, you know, the other small insect eaters, they grab them when they're small. And if they miss them, you'll see the mockingbird with a great big hornworm in his mouth. It's amazing. It looks like he could barely carry it. And he's so excited. He's got this big thing and the Orioles do the same thing. So, and the same thing with the cabbage worms too, the little loopers and all that. They come in and they hunt and hunt and hunt. They'll go in here and they'll go into the plants and you'll see them going around. 
looking, what can they find? And th because they're safe. So your seed eaters are signaling it's safe. It's a good place. It's kind of like looking at a store, you look in the window. Oh, there's nobody here. I don't want to go in, you know? And then you'll go to another store and you'll see 50 people in there. They're all looking around. Well, what's going to happen? You had no intentions of going in that store. But my goodness, if there's 50 people looking around, what is the first thing you're going to do? you got to go in there and see what they're looking for. That's what the birds are doing. The seed eaters are bringing in the insect eaters. And once they come in, they don't want the seeds. They're not interested in that. They're looking for the insects. And so that's why you want to bring the seed eaters. It's a balance. The whole thing is a wonderful, wonderful balance. So just think of yourself, everything is kind of like common sense. Look at this. I have never had my red vein sorrel. I've had this here for years. Something ate a little bit of it. Oh, this looks like birds. The way it's ripped, see how it's ripped? Could be a rabbit pulling it, but probably birds. Look at this, I'm gonna get seed and I'm gonna collect this seed. I only have red vein sorrel over here. I have a little bit of green, but it's not flowering. So I know, because this isn't related to cabbage or collard or anything, it should not, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not, it should not cross pollinate. So I will probably collect some of it. I'll let it go to flower. I've never seen the flower. Don't know what it looks like. You saw this on the last garden tour. It was just peeking through and I walked by with you all. And I was so excited because I didn't even know it was gonna flower. I had read that they flower and I thought, yeah, right, yeah, right. No, but anyways, now it's gonna flower and then I'll have seeds and I will collect that. So that's what's going on there. But you know, that's what it is. Nature, if one thing sees something, then it must be safe. It's kind of like, sometimes we have animals that eat apples. Gary will walk over to the apples. I've done it too. Start collect, picking up a bag and start loading up a bag of apples. And before you know it, you're at the table at the grocery store trying to buy apples and everybody's pushing you over because if you're buying them, well, there must be something good with the apples. So they want them too and they're all fighting over it. It's just the funniest thing. It's kind of like human nature. Well, it's not. It's animal nature. It's nature itself. Here's a good one. I went to Walmart oh, about four years ago now, three or four years ago. They had bags of potting soil for 75 cents a bag. They were small bags, one cubic foot. We had, the wood chips had not really broken down yet, so I needed some potting soil. This is a funny story. I walk in the Walmart, I look in the front, the guy's sitting out there in the nursery department, and I said, are these bags really 75 cents? And he goes, oh yeah, we're having a special today. Huh, okay. So I went into the store and I went shopping. See my eggplant, I'm gonna to have to trim that down. It's not doing well or plant a new one. We'll see what happens. And see, so this one's running. There are temperamental. Some will run the solars and some won't. They'll wait till there's more sun. So I go shopping and do my thing and I come out and the guy's still sitting there on the chair with all the plants and something in the nursery department. Look at this, I got cucumber. And I said to him, you're sure there's 75 cents? Look at that, I've got baby cucumber. Little cucumbers growing. And this I did not, I don't want anything to eat it. Because last time I was finding cucumbers eaten around the yard. Sage. Chocolate mint. The dreaded strawberry mint. It actually smells good when you touch it. Oh, it smells beautiful. Sweet like flowers. And the, those are my old beans. I've got to pull that all off and compost all that and clean all this up. I haven't done anything there. So I go outside and I said, hmm, I put my stuff in the car, I bought a couple things. I'll be right back. So I grab a shopping basket and I said, 75 cents? I think I'll take 20 of them. You want 20? I said, yeah, I'll take 20, 75 cents. So I loaded up the basket, put it in my car, and then people started walking up and they looked. Now, mind you, I went in the store for an hour with a friend and roamed around and nobody bought any of the bags they had out there for special. That's my tree collards. When I started loading up my basket, people were shoving me out of the way. One lady got so excited, she grabbed a basket. She dropped the basket, a huge basket, and it flipped over. They started grabbing the, the potting soil. I don't even know if they wanted the potting soil. They were pushing me over to get to the potting soil. I ended up buying quite a few bags. But the point is, that's just the way human nature is and birds work the same way. And within minutes, minutes of me coming out of Walmart and going to their nursery department outside they had set up, the entire pallet of what, 50 bags was gone. But before that, nobody 
touched it. Nobody looked at it. I went in the store for an hour and looked around and came out. Still, nobody bought any. He still had them. So it was just so funny how the people were fighting over them because I was buying a whole bunch. Anyways, look at that. Yes, I have not cleaned it up yet. But that's okay because, see, as long as it's attached, it's feeding the plant. And what I want to do, and I need to find the time, I want to get a container together and stick a whole bunch in there. Or I might just put them in pots. I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. Because as long as it's here, this is being fed. And when I get it off, I want to chop them into pieces. And then the pieces will grow new tree collard. So I've got to do this one. And well, this one. Yeah, this one. There's one back here and here. This one fell that way. This one has not fallen, but it will. Look at all the baby ones. At some point, this thing is like nine feet tall. I'm going to have to trim it, which is fine. See, if I trimmed it here, then I would have all new growth. So I'm probably going to trim it. This one's just gotten so massive. It's in a pot, but the roots have left and gone into the ground, but so easy to water. It's just water the pot and you know the plant's got, got it. Too many times you water something and you'll have a plant in the ground. And even though you think you're watering the roots, it's going somewhere else, the water. It depends, you know, like a river it will make its own path. And ants could be under there, moles could be under there, gophers, something, mice, whatever underneath ground. They made a little bit of a hole and started to trail something. And then once they do that, the water will go in that direction. Look at this. Purple sprouting broccoli. Like I said, and that's it going to flower up there. Once it started, it took a year, I've got purple sprouting broccoli everywhere. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Let's see, that's um, just plain old onion chives. And it went to flower. And then I've also got walking onions here. So I've got to get a lot of walking onions planted. But not yet. You can't pick them yet. If they fall off, yes, I have found that you can. But I prefer to leave them on until they get a good start. And then I'll pick them. This is another field of collard. Can you imagine? I bought this at the 99 cent store. They had a little container, a little square container with four plants in them. And these are the four plants. Yeah, bees are working all the flowers. It's amazing. This I'm going to redo. You could see that the rabbit has been coming in and eating. It doesn't matter. Gary's got so much uh, Swiss chard. I'll just go to him. Let him, you know, let them eat that and leave everything else alone. That's what, the way I look at it. So that doesn't bother me. And then I'm going to fix up. I have to think of what I want to put here. I've got walking onions. Because once this tree falls out, the moringa, and it will, it creates a massive shaded area. And I tried to grow tomatoes and different things here, and they won't grow. Not in full shade. Some of the stuff will grow. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to probably put another tomato here. This will get sun. As the sun sets, it will get enough sun. But anything under here, they won't get that much sun. So we'll see. And here is the strawberry papaya, Gary said. And he said, we're getting very close to picking. That one has one papaya. So I don't know if it'll make it, but we'll see. But it's got a flower up there. It's slowed down a little bit, I think, because the weather slowed it down. And then Gary wants to try to do cuttings off of it. It's starting to grow side shoots. He said you can do cuttings. I haven't done that. So we'll see. And then now that's basically it. You've seen that. It's in the container. But we made big holes now. So this papaya plant has set roots into the ground. Over here, again, I've got more chocolate mint, purple, kale, and then more Swiss chard. Gary's got more Swiss chard than anything. And I actually went down there. Two leaves and made a meal. They were giant. They were like giant elephant ears. See, Garlic chives come up everywhere, and they just came up from seed there. And this is that tomato cutting I put here, and I'm, it's struggling, but it's still doing good. So I want to see if I can get the tomato to grow there, because I had a really good tomato plant over there, and I think the cold killed it. I'm not sure. And so I did a cutting real quick, and I sh just shoved a little piece in that pot, and it grew. So we'll see what happens. All right, I think we've covered everything in this yard. Yes, look at all the birds coming in. So I'm trying to think, I guess that's it. So we'll leave this yard and then we'll go into the other yard. I know this is going to be long. You know what? Got a lot of people that said they want it long. And now I'm rambling stories. You're hearing my Walmart stories and my different stories on how people are. It's not, it's not just birds. It's people. It's human nature. It's, it's actually 
nature and the person itself. You see something, if somebody wants it, then you want it too. You don't even know why you want it. It's, it's, it's so funny how people are and animals are the same way. Rosemary. I think the coyotes come in here and they roll in that. Sometimes you'll see a graping in indentation. Look at that. Okay, I did have cucumber plants in here. That's the only broken container I've got and I found it in the trash broken. I even tried to duct tape it. So I'm giving it one more season and then I'll see. Somebody said to cut it so it doesn't split. Very good idea. I didn't, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'll give it one more year. I don't know if it's going to make a comeback. I now put tool on it after the fact. So we'll see. There was a, there was a cucumber in there, a cucumber in there, and there was one there. And I'm going to say a squirrel came and just chomped it right on the bottom. And that isn't good. So I don't know if he'll make a comeback. I'm not worried about it. Look at the trees. The citrus trees are loaded. We've had so much rain this year that they are just loaded with fruit. We've got so many different citrus growing. It's beautiful. Okay, the papayas are hanging in there and doing good with the weather. So we'll, we've been having papayas constantly. There's one that's ready to come off and we'll be taking that off soon. And let's see. We covered this right now because we're going to compost and place in here and keep things out. Maybe I'll put a squash or something on, in there. I'm not sure yet. And then um, the other papaya tree, he had, Gary had to wrap, wrap some tool around it because something, it only takes one, some critter decided he can climb up there and nibble on the papaya. So once he put the tool on there, same tool I use, he uses the coral, it worked. They stopped. They don't want to touch that. They think it's a trap. So tool has been a lifesaver on a lot of things. Again, don't do your entire yard or they'll get desperate. Leave something for them to eat and they won't be desperate. And then they'll just go on to something else. And look at this. I planted these from seed. And I don't know if I'm going to get pomegranates or not. But this year, it's loaded, but it's covering another little papaya I put here. Drag this out of my yard. So we'll have to see what, what's going to happen. I need to stake that up. There's the small little seedling. Those are orange trees that came up in my compost. So I'm going to get that out because I found out there are no holes on the bottom of that pot, which means the roots are in there. So I think I'm going to get it out and get them in separate pots and see what happens with them. I could either try to graft, which I have not really done yet, or, well, I don't know, or um, I don't want to compost them. I might just see what they do. Because in about you know a few years, they may grow fruit and they might be quite nice. They're either going to be blood orange or Valencia, I think, we grow. So we'll see. I'll decide later what I'm going to do. This is the other one that had no leaves. If you go back in the garden tour in the past couple months, this one was leafless. Because see the, the way the wind comes up? It got the coldest. Where the other ones were protected from the other plants, this one had the coldest spot. Remember, you have microclimates everywhere in your yard. Everywhere. A microclimate could be five inches over from the other plant you've got. So this was really cold, but look at that. It is coming back. The fruit is looking beautiful. And the weather's warming up, so that tree's going to make a comeback. And yes, more pomegranates. I had these teeny little seedlings that I had eaten a pomegranate, and well, they're growing. So we'll see what happens. And more rosemary in the corner. Now let's go to the wall. I'm going to warn you, I've done nothing here. I'm trying to move slowly through my yard and see what I'm going to do. So I haven't done anything. I put a zucchini in there and I've got it covered up because I know something will eat it out here. So I want to put something around it, tool or something. So I'll do something later. This has fallen over. You know, it's trying to make a comeback. It's so big though. It really should be taken out and composted. So we'll see what happens with that. An old celery, but the celery is doing great. I use that one. The tomato, I'm going to restake it. It's kind of like all over the place. And it's growing in those pots. But as you can see, it's going up the wall and all the way across. There is no tomato plant in this one. That tomato plant you see growing all along the wall, it's hugging the wall, is coming from here. And it's full of tomatoes. So I'm not taking it out, but I'm going to have to clean it up when I get a chance. And this is the moringa that hugs the wall. Again, a microclimate. And it has 
done really good and it's bringing the leaves back and I've been using the leaves and different things so this has been great and I want to plant more moringa which I am I've got a bunch of little ones and I've got you're going to use it as a annual as well in pots celery walking onions and I've got a cucumber plant back here oh, I've got another cucumber I looked for a couple days look at that get off little ant look at that all right, so I've got cucumber starting, and hopefully I'll have a bunch of cucumbers this year. Salad thistle, I leave that for the birds, and of course the bees. We've got little bees that are on this right now, and then I will chop and drop. And I need to clean up that eggplant, and again, some more Swiss chard. There's nothing in that container. I never planted anything. This is where I'm going to plant mainly peppers. I think I'm going to plant a lot of peppers here, and zucchini. I'm going to see I've got... What, I think I have two more containers. They match. That's why I decided how many I was going to put here. I ended up, I buy them at the thrift store for a few bucks. And I've got two more that match. So I'm going to put six containers here and see how this goes. Gary built those little raised beds. But I'm going to try the containers instead. I like containers because you can move them around and do different things with them. And they're off the ground, so I don't think the rabbits will bother them anyways. And I may still put tool. So... As I get down here, I will do something with that. The cell thistle, we leave that again. We use that in our, sometimes our eggs or green drinks, sometimes in the salad. And then it's really going to seed. So the leaves aren't going to be as tender as when it was younger. But we leave that for the birds. And once the birds are done, we'll compost all that. Look at that. Somebody called and told Gary, we've got aloe vera growing. And it was. He's made two or three trips to pick that stuff up, and he's going to dot the hillside. Okay, the truck bed, the one that raised the baby rabbits that are running around here somewhere. I have to water this more often than I should. Why? Because of the avocado tree. And I know I said about a month ago I was going to drop the avocado tree. I know there's a few people that are very attached to this avocado tree that came up from the compost in place that I do. So right now, I'm going to leave it because I have found three fruit, and there might be more, but look at that. Let me see if I can get you in there. There are three fruits on this avocado tree. So I will see what it tastes like if they make it. So far, they're going strong because three is a start, and the next year there could be 12, you know, who knows. But the problem is avocados use a lot of water. They cannot get their roots out of there. So they depend on me, that tree. Everything depends on me to get water. So I have to come out here all the time and water it. And it is sucking the water away from everything else. I am going to put some containers in here and grow that way, which will help because as I go through and water all the containers, the avocado can put its, its roots underneath and it will get nutrients from the microbes that will be in the containers as well. So we'll see what happens, but you know, a lot of this is dying back just because it went to seed and it's struggling. It could come back from the bottom, but I might clear a lot of this out when the seeds are done. I've had a lot of bees with the first set, and now we've got more flowers that will be opening soon and seeds. So I'll leave it right now, just come out here and water since I've got the hose that Gary hooked up here. And we'll see what happens with the avocado. I mean, if the fruit does make it and it tastes like rootstock, and I have tasted rootstock we have I think we have one or two trees on the property that have that they're a little black fruit and they may taste okay but they're real stringy and odd and so I yes it could be grafted but at that point I would probably drop it and then start using this again what I used to use uh, squash this whole area was covered in squash so we'll see if what I'm going to do you know it's it's a day-to-day -day thing I may tell you, hey, I'm going to chop and drop that today, and I'm going to put in corn, and then I come out here five minutes later. No, I don't think so. It's your garden. You get to come out here and at the spur of the moment do something. Just think about it first, because after you do it, you may have thought, oh, no, I don't want to do that. So right now, since I've got so much work all over, I still have to do the wall. I want to get peppers set up because the weather is supposed to start really warming up and peppers like the heat. Tomatoes don't mind 
being a little bit hot, but peppers really do need the heater. They won't grow here. They do really good in other states like Arizona and Nevada, but here in Southern California, they get really temperamental. So it, it's kind of, you need to find the right microclimate and an area where they stay fairly warm. They do really good in Gary's dishwasher tubs. So he collects dishwashers and he hides them behind that pile there. And then he takes them apart if they're metal. If he stops somebody threw a dishwasher out and they're plastic, he won't pick it up. But the metal ones stay warm and he has grown the most beautiful peppers even all through winter. So this would be really good for peppers too, maybe being the truck bed, but I'm gonna do it against the wall. So, you know, there's a lot of things I could do in here, but we'll see what I decide to do. Right now, like I said, I have so much to do. I wanna do the wall. I wanna get that all set up and I'll work on that first. I'll wait and see what happens with the fruit. Unfortunately, avocados could take quite a few months till it turns into anything, but that's okay. This is gonna take me time anyways. It, the garden is a work in progress all the time, but it's relaxing, it's fun, and I love it. Even in the winter, when you hear me complain how cold it is, I am still out here watching the birds, watching whatever animals are out here, and enjoying myself. It is just the most relaxing thing that anybody can do. I come and I sit on a chair, and I watch the baby rabbits come out. I even watch the squirrels come out and nibble on things. And I watch different things, and sometimes I even walk down and look at Gary's bees, which are right down here. There's his bees. I walked down there yesterday, and he can't get in there anymore. He said to me, I can't get in there anymore. I said, why? They sealed the hole. I'm not sorry, not the hole. The lid. He used to be able to lift the lid. That's the owl box that he hung up, up high in a palm tree. I did not see him do it. I, it's probably better I didn't see him do it or I'd be, either be furious or sick or whatever. But he climbed the palm tree and he hung it up in a palm tree. And you've seen the video. If you haven't, it's funny. What happened, and I'm sure you probably have seen the video, is he hung that owl box up, up in that pine tree up on top there. He didn't go all the way up, but he hung it way up and he was hoping for an owl to come nest in it. And it turned out within days, he didn't even realize within days, the bees found it. They went in there. He was so excited. He climbed that palm tree late at night, took the box out with what, 20, 30,000 bees. And he brought it down here. And then the next day, during the day, he moved it again because he didn't like where he put it. He said it wasn't stable enough. But he could open the lid up because the lid has got it like a piano hinge. And now the bees have sealed the lid. So you cannot open the lid and look inside. He can't peek anymore. So they didn't sting him or anything. They let him look and they'll fly all around him. They like him. He does not have a bee suit. But um, yeah, they sealed the lid. Probably, you know, to keep it warm and whatever they do, you know, what bees do. You can, of course, look in through the hole and you see the comb, the honeycomb that they're building and everything. And it's really cool. The other thing I can show you real quick over here. So I got to do a really good nature walk. I, I do it myself sometimes, and that's what's so relaxing. Is this? And there is a box that I found at a thrift store, and it was glued shut. So Gary put a piano hinge on the box, he uh, the lid, so you could get into it. And I guess he put a piece of wood on the back. See, so it will hang nice and straight. See that? And look, the bees looking. Better not go in there. And he hung it there, and now you can lift the lid. I'm not going to bother it right now, but I did the other day when I saw the parents leave. And they've got a baby in there. It looks like they're only going to raise one. And, you know, that could be natural for wrens. I have not studied wrens, so I don't know how many they normally have, but they're only going to raise what they can feed. Some of the eggs look like they were good. Some of them look like they may not have been good so whatever but there is one baby in there and hopefully the baby will be leaving soon and here is my tree of life look at that the pepper tree i've talked about so many times that we should have dropped because years ago it split in half on the other side it just broke and it went down the hill and gary had to get rid of it and he said we're going to have to drop the tree this was before wood chips before he brought in the wood chips and now that the wood chips are here, the tree has just flourished and everything, everything feeds and lives in this tree. Hummingbirds nest in here, 
goldfinches nest in here. You got the wrens now nesting on the side of the tree. And just a lot of things are using this tree, including the bees, because right now it's flowering. And I know you can't hear it, but the bees are just buzzing. And they're probably higher up to try to get the sunlight because it's kind of cool right now and bees like it warm. So I think with that, I have now talked your ear off. I'm going to have lots of complaints that it's too long. But you know, it's not just a garden tour. I tell you things I do, so maybe it gives you ideas to do it either the way I do it, or you'll have a better way of doing it. So with that, we're done. I'll have another one in two weeks. I see changes daily here now, and we are now full force growing, I hope. Have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow, everybody. Thanks for joining me on the garden tour. Bye-bye. A quick ending to my garden tour. As soon as I was done, the sun popped open. And look at this. All my solar fountains are going. Look over here. And I've got more on the other side of the yard going. This one's going. And this one's going. That one's got that little trickle. My angel's going. Even this one back here is going. Look at that. I think this summer, we're gonna sit down, all of us. We're gonna make a lot of solar fountains, all different fun ways that cost almost nothing. Okay, off I go. Have a great day. And again, don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.